We're going to use a step-by-step -step method to learn how to draw realistic gemstones with colored pencils. By the end of this video, you will learn how to shape gemstones with ease, how to make them look realistic with color, and I'll tell you how you can use them to complement a drawing or a coloring page. The project we're working on today will also help you sharpen your observation skills, and with the tips I'm going to give you, you'll be able to draw realistic gemstones of all shapes and colors from scratch. Hi, my name is Francoise. Welcome to my channel for tips and tricks to color with a twist. The only supplies you will need are a coloring page, a piece of paper, or a sketchbook. I prefer smooth paper for my realistic work, but for practice, you can use anything you have. For my practice sketch and drawing, I am using this notebook. As you can see, this is not drawing paper since the lining shows through, but it still works. And for my coloring, I printed this page out from a PDF file I got from the Mariola Beauty Etsy store onto Strathmore Smooth Paper, which is an artist quantity paper. So as you can see, I used two very different types of paper, but that didn't affect my drawing too much. You will also need a mechanical pencil or a sharpened graphite pencil for the sketch. A few colored pencils. I'm using a monochrome palette here. All pencils are Prismacolor Premier colored pencils, but you can use any brand you like. A blender, a white colored pencil. I'm using the white Prismacolor pencil because it's creamy and blends colors together well. You can use another white colored pencil or a blender if you have one, but I'd recommend wax-based pencils like the Prismacolors are. They will work better here than oil-based pencils because they are a creamier type that's just easier to blend. And finally, a set of erasers. I'm using a regular Faber-Castell eraser for mess-ups, a netted eraser to fade the initial sketch, and a Tombow Mono eraser for the highlights. If you don't own the last two, you should be able to manage anyways, and I'll show you how. I'm happily sharing these techniques because they are working great for me and produce results I love, but there are many other ways to proceed and there is no right or wrong way to do this as long as it's enjoyable and satisfying. The first step is to find a reference picture. This will help you observe how gemstones are shaped and guide you through the whole coloring process. When I work from a reference, I like to go to free stock photos websites. That way I know I can copy pictures to learn and improve my art with the artist's consent and not risk being flagged for copyright infringement. My favorite sites among all the ones you can find are Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels, which I'll link in the description. If you use their photos and display your art on social media, it's still good practice to credit the photographer if you have their name. So this is the picture I picked to learn how to craft gemstones on paper. I chose that one because there's pretty good contrast to practice here with really dark and really light areas. A great way to work on contrast for more realism. The second step is to sketch the gemstones. As you can see from my reference photo, gemstones are fairly easy to reproduce because they are made of a combination of shapes, mostly geometrical. And it doesn't matter whether you copy them exactly or not, unlike it would for a human face, for instance. Gemstones can be drawn completely geometrical if you like it that way, or the lines can be a little more crooked in places, like they appear to be on my reference. Shape and evenness will add to a more realistic look, so that's what I'm going to go for here. And really not worry too much about making an exact copy. Now, you can make up Plenty of different gemstones from basic 3D shapes based on triangles, squares, rectangles, or even circles. On top are examples of perfectly geometrical gemstones, and at the bottom, the same type of gemstones with less straight lines and a more authentic look. Be aware that right now I'm sketching with a heavy hand for you to see what I'm doing, but I would normally use very little pressure to avoid harsh lines that are going to be hard to erase. To draw the shapes, proceed triangle after triangle or rectangle after rectangle, for instance, connecting the dots to make them touch and form a 3D shape. Try to focus on the shape you see on the reference, not on what it actually represents. Break the bigger shapes down into the smaller ones that you see within. 
It's hard to forget about what the picture represents at first, but it really helps getting a sketch to be accurate without stressing about the whole process. Now we know how to shape gemstones, let's draw them closer to each other just like that. Small crevices are interesting to add in between them if you go for the realistic version of it since it will help build contrast and make the stones appear bumpy in places, hollow in others and so on. We will darken up the crevices as much as possible to achieve the effect of a hollow area. Final tip for the sketching part, lighten up your sketch lines with a netted eraser once you're ready to color by applying gentle pressure on the pencil strokes with the eraser. If you don't have a netted eraser, you may still use a regular one. It is a little less convenient and more likely to damage the paper a bit, but it works. You will see best results if you sketched with a light hand in the first place, no matter how good your eraser is, what type or what shape it is. Now it's time to color our gemstones. Layering is key to getting a wide variety of shades and a nice blend for a beautiful look. I selected three colors to layer in order to create the purple gemstones in my reference. I chose lavender, dahlia purple, and dark purple. The reason for this is working with only three colors is made possible here because this is a monochrome image. It is a lot easier to proceed this way if you're new at coloring and want to practice blending and shading without having to work with a bunch of colors. By using my color chart as well as the piece of paper, I found those three would look good together and be easy to use since one of them is light, one is much darker, and the last one places in between, all in the same kind of color range. What I like to do is apply a first layer of my lightest color, which here is lavender. I am going to proceed shape by shape because if I start covering all of one gemstone with a layer of lavender, I will not know where the original sketching lines are. I'm going to use this color as a base layer for everything but the sharpest of white highlights. Let's start here. When coloring, in the early layering stages especially, I use very light pressure on my pencil and color in small circular motions. I also make sure the tip of it is really sharp. It makes it easier to get into all the small crevices in the paper. I'm done with that first layer of lavender, and now I'm going to add a second one and overlap it to the first everywhere, but the lightest areas to keep those almost white. Now I pick up the dye purple pencil, which I consider to be my average color here, not too light, not too dark. I overlap this onto my lavender shade in all the areas of my reference except for the white and light ones. I keep using circular motions and the light pressure all the way. Just like I did for lavender, I layer dye purple once more, wherever I feel the average values I just placed are more on the darkest side. Finally, I am going to use my darkest color, the dark purple, which I keep for the darkest areas of my gemstone, overlapping it once to my lavender and dye purple colors where the picture is dark, then once more in the darkest of all spots. With only three colors, layered twice each in specific areas, I am getting a really nice color variation range of six values plus white for the highlights. The fun part, I don't know what it is for you, but for me, is to blend them all together. I like to use my white Prismacolor pencil to do so. It's so creamy, I find it very effective as a blender, even though it tends to tone down the colors a bit. There are a lot of other ways and tools to blend colors I would like to perfect, which I will cover in future videos as I dive deeper into my own learning process. I love to study, test, and try new things, so feel free to suggest other ways to blend in the comments that you would like to see an in-depth tutorial for. Let's go back to my current blending technique. I use my white colored pencil in the same way I did the others, except I tend to press a little more. Making circular motions is really important here, as this will help drag the pigment around and blend it effectively to others, avoiding leaving harsh variations of wax buildup between our various shades. This also helps fill out the last crevices that are left from the tooth of the paper. I personally like the smooth look a lot more than the grainy one, but if you don't, you should try using as gentle pressure as you can while blending. If you're using a more textured paper and like the smooth look, you may need to apply 
twice as many layers to get the same result. You know there are enough layers when applying a little pressure to blend, feels like it's enough. On this particular drawing, I also went over the outer lines of each of my shapes with the white prismacolor to get them to look better defined, an angular and geometrical look being part of the final outcome. I would not do this for a portrait and avoid marking lines with any of my pencils whenever I can. Lines, once made with colored pencils, leave some kind of dent in the paper and are really hard to hide, so I'd recommend to avoid them as much as possible where geometry is not a part of the look you aim at. If you are using a white pencil for the blending process and feel it's toned your colors down too much, there is nothing wrong with adding one or two extra layers of your colors on top and blend again. And if this is not the technique for you, you can find blenders that will not affect the colors after blending, like this colorless pencil from Prismacolor. I use this one less because I think it feels a bit scratchy compared to the white Prisma, but it works fine too. Once you break layering into small steps, it starts feeling like a more approachable technique to practice, especially when using very few colors. And it's exactly the same for shading. Shading helps improve contrast, and I know the term alone can seem intimidating when you do not know where to start. It can be done little by little and stopped whenever you are satisfied about the overall look of your drawing. Every time a gemstone overlaps another one here, I like to make sure I emphasize the resulting shadow that appears underneath with my dark purple pencil. Try to imagine how flat the same drawing will look without this type of detail. I also make sure all sides of one gemstone don't look the same contrast-wise. The lightest ones emphasize the idea of light hitting them and color variation on the other ones does the rest. You can go back to the reference picture and observe it some more as this appears very clearly on gems. Every time I add color for contrast, I blend again with my white prisma to fade it into the rest. How do I add shadows to the darkest spots? Here I managed to do it with a dark purple colored pencil, but I could have gone a little further into it and used a darker color, same shade or not. Sometimes I'll use a dark gray or even black for that purpose. When using such dark colors, make sure you keep it discreet. By that, I mean that in my experience, I think it's best to overlap just a bit of the gray or black pencil on a small part of dark area you are targeting. If layered on the whole darker surface, it may look a bit harsh in contrast to the rest since we are mainly working with luminous colors. Now on to highlights. How do I get the highlighted spots this light? Either I leave them blank or add very little color to them, but I still use my white pencil on them to melt the edges to the neighboring sides. I also use my Tombow Mono Eraser to emphasize highlights here and there if needed. If you don't have one of those, there's a trick you can use. Get a regular cheaper eraser and cut it to a sharp angle with a kitchen knife to form an edge that will help you erase tiny areas and use this instead. The pencil is still more convenient since you can see where the tip lands much better and be more precise, so if you get a chance to get one, I would recommend it. The sixth and final step is to take a break after you have completed a few gemstones, take a step back and observe. Do you like the way it looks? Are there any areas you need to improve? Did the colors blend nicely and is there enough contrast? Can you see the design pop out of the page? Take action to improve on anything you feel needs more work and repeat this process for the whole piece. You'll notice that after a while, you won't even need the reference picture to draw a gemstone. Once you have shaped a few and you understand how to make them stand out from each other, it will seem much easier and that is when you find you're able to include them to your drawings and colorings really easily. My drawing, for instance, is far from perfect since it does not exactly match the reference and misses a lot of the small highlights but it still looks good enough to my taste since I have never drawn gemstones before and I find I got a great training session for gemstones drawing in general. And last but not least, here are a few tips on how you may use gemstones as a way to add interest to your work in progress. On my coloring page, the idea of the gemstones came after I messed the skin up and was looking for a way to cover it up. As you can see, I use them as clothing here, but I could have used them as a way to texture the background, for instance, or as ornaments or jewelry for the hair or crown. 
Remember you can vary the number and size of gemstones you are drawing. If you are patient and detail oriented, you could also use them as skin texture in places. You can also vary their shape and make them oval. On my notebook, I simply copied them from the reference photo, and I realized there was a strong resemblance to Corsica except for the tip missing, meaning they can also help shape something else you would like to draw by adding texture to it. There are a lot of ways to get creative with them, and taking action towards creating your own thing will lead to new ideas or happy accidents like it did for me. If there are any additional topics about drawing with colored pencils you would like to know about, let me know in the comments down below. For a glimpse into my work in progress and behind the scenes content, you may head over to my Instagram page, which I will link in the description. If you liked that video, share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up so I know to make more of this type of content. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified of all future videos. Thanks for watching.